OK, I'm back. Once again, as I was saying, um, we use the password command to change the password. The password has to change something in the shadowed in the shadow file because that's where your passwords are kept. But we don't want to give everybody permission to read and write into that file. So what we do is we have a special trick where um, let me find where the password file uh, command is kept. Um, if we look at the access rights to the password file uh, command, it has a funny access right. There is an S here, um, which uh, that S means that this is called a SUID file. And the way the SUID works is if I have a command that is an SUID command, then um, or has the SUID bit set, then that command, um, for just the duration of that command, while you run that command, if you're allowed to run that command, while you learn, run that command, you become um, the owner of that file. In other words, just for the duration of the password command, you become root. Um, and root, of course, has the rights to write to the shadowed file. So me, as a simple user out here, I type password. I type my old password. I type my new password, which will be, uh, well, I don't know. And it asked me to type that again. Now, because I was root while I ran that command, but I'm no longer root, as soon as I get out of that command, I'm back to being me, I was allowed to update that um, file. So let's see what happened to this file. Um, notice the time date modified got changed because I changed my password. And so that wrote to that. And it was root that wrote to that. Now, I'm dwelling on this a great deal for a good reason. That means for an instant, a normal user, dmandel, was root on the system. It only lasts for the length of time I run the password command. So what happens if password has a back door in it? What I'm saying is uh, then I could become root without really knowing the root password, without having permission. So set UID programs are very, um, uh, well, so I guess I'd say dangerous, but they're, they have to be well written. Because if there's any back doors, if there's anything bad in a set UID, in a program that is run as a set UID program, or likewise one that is run as a set GUID program, then that produces back doors into your system and all your security falls to pieces. This also means if you've got a guy that's trying to be a cracker and whatnot, what he's going to do is he's either going to try and replace something like the password file with a uh, one of these set UID programs that are on the system with his own version. So you've got to watch for that and be careful that somebody doesn't replace one of those commands with his own version so he can get to be a back, uh, so he can introduce a version with a backdoor. Or else he'll try to put on a new program that is set uh, UID. Or I mean, that's one technique used. So one of the things we do uh, to protect the security of a Linux or a Unix system is we watch very closely and we scan the systems um, watching for set UID and set GUID files and um, making sure new ones don't occur and making sure that there's been no um, changes or updates in the old ones that um, aren't authorized and that basically 
we systems administrators did not do ourselves. So um, that's just that's basically what I wanted to say about uh, set UID and set GID files because um, they it, it really is important to monitor those in terms of system security. Um, especially if you've got a system where people are allowed to come in from the outside world and um, or a lot of people that you don't know and don't um, um, don't particularly trust. So that's everything I had to say about chapter four. I know that was an awful lot to say about a very short chapter, but um, uh, but I think that's everything. And um, good night. Have fun, enjoy life, and um, talk to you later. Bye-bye.